Hey everyone, welcome to the Retro channel. This video is a pretty quick one. I'm just comparing some of the different RF modulator replacements for the Commodore 64. So this is in preparation for the upcoming video where I'll actually be showing off the RF modulator replacements that I designed. But I figured we may as well have a look at some of the other things that are out there, just comparing the video quality of all of them. Obviously mine also does some work to improve the video output, but it does have a bunch of other features that I wanna talk about in the build video. So for this one, we're just gonna look at various different screenshots. So if that doesn't interest you, by all means, wait for the build video. But if you wanna see different screenshots from all these different RF replacements, um, stick around. So for the test setup, I'm using the 25407 board with an R3 VIC-2. This is a PAL revision. And I've just put in some little pin headers here just so I can swap in and out RF modulator replacements. I'm gonna be using the Easy Flash 3 cartridge because it's got a pretty vibrant menu and there's a lot of contrast and detail in it. So I'm gonna run through these in what I think is from worst to best. Now, this is all, of course, in my own opinion. So uh, I'm not saying that all of these people that made their own RF modulators have made junk. I think all of these do a fine job, but they have different strengths and weaknesses. So I'm gonna try and be as unbiased as possible here, but obviously I'm gonna include screenshots of my own RF replacement. So you be the judge. Be sure to leave a comment if you think differently on these. Let's go. First up as a baseline, we've got probably the worst combination. So this is composite video with the 3603 Commodore RF modulator. At a distance, it probably doesn't look too bad, but if we zoom in, we can really see some of the shortcomings. The easiest place to spot the differences are probably this white portion at the top of the box, the vertical edges on the sides of the box, this yellow selection background, and also the spaces in between the L's and the M's on the screen. The 3603 modulator probably produces the worst image. It's very smeared and blurry, and there's not much detail at the top of the selection box. Moving on to Copper Dragons mod, this one has a lot less luma, so it's not as bright, but you can actually make out the pixels in the white space at the top of the selection box. The colors that you see in between some of the text is a artifact from composite on PAL video, so you get a bit of color bleed here and there. And you can just kind of make out some of the vertical jail bars in the background of the selection box. So Copper Dragon one isn't great on composite, Moving up from that is a mod that Adrian Black showed in one of his videos. It pretty much involves cutting a couple of capacitors out of the RF modulator, uh, depending on the RF modulator and whether it's PAL or NTSC. And it does improve the composite output of the stock RF modulator. I think it does a better job improving the S video output, which we'll get to. But yeah, you do get a lot of color bleed in the text. Moving on from that is the CBM Crew RF modulator replacement. You can find some details of this on the German forum 64.de. So the CBM Crew does tone down some of that color bleed, but it also tones down some of the brightness as well. So not a huge fan of that for composite. Next up we have Matt Barsis's. Sorry, I'm not good with pronunciation. Let's just go with Matt. This one does seem to do a bit better job than the CBM Crew in my opinion. Going beyond that, we actually have one of the Commodore RF modulators. This is the 3605 version. Next up, we have my RF replacement in its stock configuration. There is a little bit more noise, but I think that's just sharpening up of the very poor detail in composite video. And then after that, we have T-Bull's replacement, which does soften everything a little bit, but maybe a little bit more pleasing to some people. And then going back to my RF modulator replacement with the Luma Chroma bypass, there is a bump in sharpness, but we've also got a bit more color bleed. I think that's always just gonna be the trade-off with composite video. And then just for fun, we'll have a look at my RF replacement with the Kawari and Luma Chroma bypass. And this actually produced a sharper image, but it also made the color bleed a little bit worse. So. What I did was disable the Luma Chroma bypass while still keeping the quarry in. And I think this produced the best possible image from AC64 over composite video, which uh, isn't really saying that much. But if we zoom back out again, it certainly doesn't look so bad for composite video. And if we compare that to what we started with, which was the 3603 RF modulator, uh, I think the results speak for themselves. 
Let's take a look at some S-Video samples. Again, I'm gonna start off with what I think is from worst to best, but again, in my opinion, so uh, feel free to disagree. And no surprise, the stock 3603 RF modulator probably looks the worst. If we zoom in on that, we can see a good amount of smearing. This is pretty much corrected for the most part with the mod by Adrian Black. And then moving on to the CBM crew, it looks like the white box has gained a little bit more detail, but again, everything is a little bit darker with this replacement. Stepping up from that, we have Matt's RF mod, which looks to lighten everything up a little bit, but is still somewhat blurry. And then Teeble's mod, which sharpens everything just that little bit more. But now we're also seeing a decent amount of checkerboarding, probably from sharpening everything up so much. The Commodore 3605, the later RF modulator, seems to correct that but it also does that by smearing everything back out. So colors look solid again without checkerboarding, but everything has a nice blur to it, especially that white part of the selection box. The Copper Dragon replacement sharpens everything back up again, but again, we run into the checkerboarding issue. And then my RF replacement in its stock configuration definitely tones down a bit of that checkerboarding. Don't know about the sharpness. It might be slightly softer than the Copper Dragon one, Doing the Lumachroma bypass on mine seems to sharpen everything up just a tiny bit, but doesn't do much for the checkerboarding. And then disabling the composite video output from my board, which again I'll go into in the build video, does tone down the checkerboarding quite a bit. If we combine the Lumachroma bypass and the composite video disable, I think that's probably as best we're going to get from a stock VIC-2. And then just for fun, this is my RF replacement with the Kawari, which uh, yeah, does look quite nice. It can also be helped by doing the Lumachroma bypass and disabling the composite helps with the checkerboarding. And then Lumachroma bypass and composite disable gives us, I think the best possible picture we can hope for. If we zoom back out again, everything looks quite pleasing with this setup, especially when you compare it to the original 3603 modulator. As a bonus, one more thing I wanted to look at was the Commodore 128 because people familiar with that will know that it suffers terribly from jail bars and my RF replacement can also help with that somewhat. Now these Commodore 128 captures were taken with a very cheap capture device. So this was long before I had the RetroTINK 5X. So some of this might just be down to the cheap capture device, but I really don't want to pull apart the Commodore 128D again, just to pull my RF replacement out of it and put the original one back in. So we're going to roll with this. So composite video with the stock RF modulator doesn't look great. It is quite blurry and putting my replacement in there did sharpen everything up. Although it looks to sharpen up the jail bars just a touch. If we zoom back out, we can get a better idea. So the stock RF, yeah, it's fairly soft. And my RF replacement doesn't actually look too bad, especially when you're not zoomed in by 400%. But what's more interesting is the S-Video side of things. So S-Video with the stock RF definitely shows up a lot of those jail bars. And putting in my replacement definitely toned down those jail bars a bit. But what's more interesting is doing the Lumachroma bypass, which seems to have softened those jail bars right down. I guess as best as you can expect from a 128 anyway. Again, if we zoom back out, this is what it looks like with the stock RF and putting in my RF plus doing the Lumachroma bypass seems to have really softened those jail bars. Unfortunately, I don't think there's much else that can be easily done for the 128. So my RF replacement certainly helped, but it didn't completely eliminate those jail bars. Maybe one day if we get a VIC-2 Kawari for the 128, so a VIC-2E Kawari, maybe that'll help. Um, a lot of noise is definitely generated by the original VIC-2, both in a C64 and a 128, so there's only so much an RF replacement can do. So that is it for this one. Like I said, we were just looking at a bunch of comparison screenshots just so I don't fill up the actual build video with all of these screenshots. So um, if you hung around this far, thank you very much. Um, but if you wanna see the actual build video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that kind of jazz. Leave me a comment if you, um, if you thought one of these looked better than the other, um, whether it's mine or somebody else's or even the stock RF modulator, if you really like the look of that one. Either way, I'd be interested to know. Um, 
But until next time, thank you all for watching. A massive thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. And I will catch you in the next one where we actually put one of these together. Bye.